Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are finally testing out the new Viseart Serenus Aton Dew eyeshadow palette. This is now available on their website as well as Beautylish, which is where I got mine. So this is what the packaging looks like. This does have a 36 month shelf life and is made in the US. So they did make a slight change to their packaging. Normally these are a bit more of a bifold, so I would pull it open right about here. But this palette is a little bit different, so it does have this down here, and then this little piece can be folded backwards. This is kind of just like a wax paper situation, and it does have lines where you can tear it off if you want to. I'm just going to fold it back for now. So this is what the color story looks like. And I do think this is a really, really beautiful color story. So this is definitely a more cool tone color story. We do have some warmer shades in here too though. So today we are going to create three different looks. We'll look at some swatches and then I will show you some comparisons to some other palettes in my collection. Popping up those swatches. So going left to right, we have the shade Sylph, which is a champagne rose with a metallic finish. Serenade is a soft mid-tone neutral pink with a matte finish. Mirror Mirror is a mid-tone nude rose with a matte finish. Melusine is a mid-tone sandy nude with blue-green duochromatic flex. Ethos is a light muted neutral pink peach with a matte finish. Luminary is a nude quartz with a metallic finish. Triton is a second skin nude topper with silver duochromatic flex. Oceanic is a rich navy blue-green with a blue duochromatic flex. Glinting is a nude silver with a metallic finish. Siren is a violet blue with turquoise duochromatic flex. Abyss is a mid-tone grayish purple with a matte finish. And Brine is a bitter brown quartz with copper reflectivity and a metallic finish finish. So let me zoom you in. We'll create three different looks and then I will show you some comparisons. Okay, so for look number one, I think I want to go with the most out of my comfort zone look. So I will be doing a look on each eye and then finishing with my look I'm going to go with for the rest of the day. So I think the shade that I want to focus on for the first look is going to be this one right here. This is just a very out of my comfort zone shade. I don't tend to love shades like this, but because it is kind of a standout in the palette, I do want to use it. So I am going to start with this shade right here and just sort of start working this one in the crease. And I think I'm actually going to do a halo eye for this first look. We actually did a bit of a date night last night and it was much needed after this past week, but I did wear this palette last night and I absolutely loved it. And I think the look that I wore last night is probably going to be my third look. Next, I'm going to take this shade right here. This is that grayish and I'm going to start working this one on the outer and inner corner. So starting with that outer corner, I do apologize if you hear a lot of background noise. We are still in the process of doing some renovations to our bathroom and my husband is working on those right now. So that is what that noise is all about. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but just in case. I am also just a really, really huge fan of Viseart shadows. I think they have one of my favorite formulas. I definitely do have some formulas that I love above all else. And this is definitely up in my, I would say my top five for sure. Their mattes are just always so blendable and buttery and easy to work with. The shimmers are also very beautiful. I do feel like Viseart, which is a pro artist brand, but they are definitely one of those brands I think that will look great on everybody. They definitely have really lovely formulas. I think their formulas are ones that are going to look great on texture lids, on mature lids. And whatever your concern may be, I think the Viseart shadows can be a great solution. I have quite a few of their palettes and I love them so much. That came together really, really well. And that's another thing. I feel like the looks that I create with Viseart are just so effortless, which is why I always buy their palettes. Now I'm going to pick up this shade right here. I'm gonna pick this one up on a finger. And this is the type of shade that I do not normally love. It's sort of got that blue, 
purple brown shift to it and I don't actually love that very much because to me that makes me look tired uh, and I just don't need help in that regard but I do want to show you what this shade looks like. So I'm going to start by placing it right in the middle. This really isn't going to be a true halo eye because I'm just sort of putting this one all over the lid but this does actually look really really nice in this way for sure. It looks really great with that grayish matte that we used. Just really pretty, really simple. I'm just going in to sort of smooth out the edges. So I do think that looks really, really nice. I do want to add the littlest bit of this shade right here, right in the middle, but I think I want to do that with a brush just so I can get a little bit more control. I don't know if I'll like this, but I just want a little bit of brightness. Just right in the very, very, very center. Yeah, that's a little better. And I do think that's all I would do with this look. I don't think I would really want to add anything else. I just wanted a very soft, very easy halo. And I definitely got that. And I think that is the way that I would continue to use that particular shade. I don't think that shade is actually going to get a lot of love for me. I just don't particularly love this type of shade, but I do think it worked very, very well. And I think it played very well particularly with that grayish shadow. But that is look number one. Let's get into look number two and then I'll pop on some mascara and show you the finished final looks. So I did just realize another thing that's missing from this newer packaging is a mirror. So if you're somebody who normally uses the mirrors in these, this doesn't have it. I do like this packaging. I was just, I mean, it took me this long to realize there's no mirror, so maybe it's not a big deal, but just something I wanted to point out. Okay, for the other side, I think I might want to play with some of these warmer shades. So we do have these top two shades here, and then we have this shade right here. It's definitely not the most unique shade, but I do kind of want to play with it anyway. So I'm going to start with the exact same shade I started with on the other eye. And I think I forgot to mention, but I do just have some concealer on my lids, and I set it down with powder for the look I'm wearing for the rest of the day, I will go in with my Alter Ego eyeshadow base. I just don't need these to last all day because I'm gonna take them off pretty much right away. Anyway, next I'm gonna go into this shade right here. And I think maybe since we did a halo on the other side, we'll do that over here as well. So I'm gonna start by putting this on the outer and inner corner. This is the same brush I used for that grayish matte on the other side, I just cleaned it off. I love the shape of this brush. This is the Ruffer 01, and there's something about it that I really, really like because it's kind of like a fluffy crease brush, but it's actually pinched more on one side, so one side does end up being a little bit flatter. So it does work beautifully for the outer corner especially, but it worked really well for the inner corner as well. I am trying really, really hard to keep my mirror out of the shot, but I do forget and find it creeping up sometimes, so I apologize for that. It feels like it's been a minute since we did an eyeshadow palette review, like September, October, that's all we were doing, and I love it, it's my favorite time. But then today I feel like a complete rookie, so. I am thinking ahead to the new year, and I am thinking of introducing a series where maybe once a week or once a month, I do a video where I play with an older palette or maybe I do a full video of playing with older makeup, something like that. It'd be like a chatty get ready with me kind of thing, but it would be using either older makeup or maybe a five days one palette with an older eyeshadow palette. I don't know 100% what it's going to look like, but even though I am primarily a review channel, I do want to bring back in some of those videos where I do show some love to some of my older, well-loved products. So let me know down below if you'd be interested in that and let me know maybe your suggestion and what maybe you would like to see out of a series like that. Let me know, I love hearing from you guys. And I'm just sort of starting to play in December's content, but I'm also thinking ahead to what January is going to look like. Next, I want to try taking that gold shimmer right here, and I think I do want to try it with a brush to start. So I'm going to place this right in the very center, just like I did with that other shade. And that shimmer applied beautifully with a brush. I 
think that's really pretty. Very, very simple, very easy, very everyday, but very, very pretty. And actually for both eyes, I think I wanna go into this very soft shade right here. And I kinda wanna use this in my inner corner to just sort of brighten things up and also just sort of clean that area up a little bit. That is perfect for that. Definitely gave me a bit of a brightening. Okay, let me pop off camera. I'll pop on some mascara. I'll come back to show you the finished first two looks and then we can get into the third and final look. All right, so here are the finished first two looks. And I like how they both came together. Again, they're both very, very simple, very easy, three or four shades at the most. But I think they came together really well. I think they're very pretty. They're very easy to do. And again, that's part of what I love so much about the Vizier palettes is just how easy and appropriate they are for every day. I love that so much. So I actually do really like how both looks came together. Again, the shimmer that I used on this side is not a shimmer I'm going to reach for often. I just really don't love that type of shade. This one... Yeah, I'm gonna do that quite frequently because I do sometimes love a warmer look. So again, just two very simple, very easy, very wearable looks, but let me pop off camera. I'll take these off and we'll get into the third and final look. All right, so starting again with this shade up top here, I feel like this is just the perfect crease shade for me. And this one, I am just dusting all through the crease. For me, this shade is just the absolute perfect transition between my actual skin and whatever shade I'm putting down. But this is just the most perfect transition shade for me. I also haven't heard yet about Viseart's Black Friday sale. They have been doing weekly sales where they have some of their palettes steeply discounted, but I haven't heard about their actual Black Friday sale yet. And it's usually a pretty good one. Usually you can get up to 60% off. So their Black Friday sale is well worth checking out. I just don't know when it is yet. And they've been kind of keeping it very much on the down low this year. I really don't know anything in advance of the sale. So I will have to keep you updated in my community tab when I get that information. I may actually shop the sale this year. Okay, going back into that gray shade right down here. This time I'm going to keep this one a little bit more concentrated to the outer corner. I will bring it up into the crease, but definitely focusing it much more on that outer corner. I will say there have been a lot of Black Friday deals that have already started. Some of them I've shared with you. Um, I know I've done a few videos so far just detailing the Black Friday sales for this year. Next, I'm going to go into this shade right here. This is such a pretty shade. I am going to try it on a brush. And this is, again, I am recreating the look that I wore last night that I just thought was so super pretty. I think today might actually be looking a little bit smokier, but that's okay. Another thing I just absolutely love about Vizier Shadows is how well the shimmers perform when you use a brush. I'm someone who always uses my fingers with shimmers because you just get the best application. I don't love having to wet my brushes. It's just easier to go in with my fingers. So when I find a formula like this that does apply beautifully and look beautiful when you go in with a brush, I always appreciate it so, so much. Just grabbing another brush and I'm gonna go in to this shade right here. And I'm going to put this sort of in the outer corner also using it to mesh that shimmer with that grayish matte. I just wanna take the littlest bit of that nude shade right here, just a little bit, and I just sorta of wanna go around those outer edges just to clean things up. And I also wanna take a little bit of that same nude shade on a smaller brush and just pop it again on that inner corner just to make sure that looks nice and bright. Let me just clean up my under eyes a little bit. I'll zoom you out and then we can get into some comparisons and I'll share my final thoughts. Okay, so we have the finished third and final look and I love how this one came together. Like I said, I wore this one last night and I loved it. Right away, I can tell you that I think this is such a pretty color story. My neutral loving heart 
loves a color story like this so much. So let's get into some comparisons. I do only have one Vizier palette that kind of made me think of this new one. So here we have the Serenius Aton Dew, and then I also pulled out the Cashmere Charmeuse palette. So I do feel like there are some similarities, but they're not as similar as I initially thought they were. Also wanted to mention, this is what the typical Aton Dew palettes look like. They do open like this, and it's kind of like a trifold, and then you can just have it like this. And then like I showed you, this one just goes like this, and there's no mirror in this one. And the pant sizes look to be the same, so it really is just a difference in packaging. So while they're not 100% identical, I do think there are a lot of similarities. There are, of course, some differences too. We do have that brighter pop of gold in the cashmere, and we do have that more pinky dual chrome, and I do think the cashmere palette gives us a little bit more depth, but I do think that there are some similarities there. Again, they're not identical palettes, but they're definitely belonging to the same family. The next palette I absolutely had to pull out is the Natasha Denona I Need a New Palette. So looking at these side by side, I really don't think they look that similar. And of course, in the Natasha palette, you don't get that more blue, purple, brown shade, which is my least favorite anyway. But popping up the swatches... I think you're going to be able to achieve some similar looks. I do think the Viseart will give you a lot more depth, and, but I do think the Natasha is going to give you a lot more impact with your shimmers. Um, you can see the one shade from the Natasha palette, the shade Muse, is so intensely metallic compared to the Viseart. That's just pretty standard. But again, even though these are not 100% identical color stories and shades, I still feel like they are all belonging to a similar family. But of course, like I said, the Viseart definitely does give you more depth and you do have that purpley brown dual chrome shade in there. And I do think the Viseart leans a little bit more cool, even more so than this one. And I think because of that more navy shade in the Viseart palette, I really wanted to pull out the Makeup by Mario because this is the most recent one we've seen that's very, very neutral, but that also has a pop of navy. So I will pop up those swatches and you can see there really wasn't nearly as many similarities as I thought, particularly with the mattes. The mattes definitely went in a completely different direction. And finally, I also thought about the new Huda Beauty Icy Nude because this is one I've been loving a ton recently. This is another one that has a lot of cool tones, but we do have some pops of warmer shades in here. We have some pops of pink. We can go silver with this, and we do have a pop of gold in here too. So that description does also fit the Viseart palette in many, many ways. But one thing I did notice, of course, is the Huda palette, she does tend to go more toward these purple leaning mattes when she puts in these browns, they almost have a purpley element to them as opposed to like a more brown or a more gray. So that was the main difference. You can definitely use the Huda palette to create a lot of the looks that you might go for in the Vizier palette, 100%. I do think the Huda shimmers are going to be a lot more bold and impactful, but if you're just looking for something that is super simple and easy and wearable for every day, a very, very easy formula to work with, the Viseart is absolutely perfect. So I realized as I was recording this that I did not compare the Viseart palette to the Natasha Denona Glam palette, which is weird because this is easily one of the most similar in my collection. Now looking at them side by side, you can definitely see a lot of similarities. The main difference is the Viseart, that purple blue brown shade that I don't really like that much, but otherwise they do look quite similar. And then popping up the swatches, you can see that the mattes in the Natasha Denona definitely do lean a little bit more cool tone, but overall, we did get a lot of very similar shades. And additionally, at the time that the Glam palette came out, Natasha wasn't yet introducing her sparkling foil shades. She wasn't using those sparkling wet effects. So the shimmer shades in here actually have a very similar sort of impact as the Viseart. I still think the Natasha is a little bit more impactful, but the shimmers are definitely much more comparable here. So I do think if you have the Glam palette, you can create some very similar looks as the Viseart. So while I definitely do have some other palettes in my collection that definitely belong to a similar color family, I still think this is a beautiful palette. I love the color story. I am a sucker for a neutral. 
always, and I just think it's a fantastic palette overall. The quality in here did not suffer. The quality is their standard easy to work with formula. The mattes, again, they essentially just blend themselves. They're so, so quick when you're trying to create these looks. They're just so quick and easy. They blend it like a dream. I love how the shimmers apply with a brush just as beautifully as if you used your fingers. I do like being able to use a brush for precision, but I'm not a huge fan of needing to spray my brushes. And with the Viseart shadows, I never feel like I have to do that. So I just think this is fantastic. I don't love this shade. I can't see myself getting a lot of use from this shade in particular, but the rest of the palette I do really love. And maybe I won't use this one as much either because it's sort of a navy smoky shade maybe as a liner but the rest of the palette is definitely a very me color story it's definitely something i'm going to reach for it's definitely more cool leaning with a couple of warmer pops that really aren't that warm so i overall really like this one i don't know if it'll be my favorite my absolute favorite viseart palette is the paris reverie palette that came out back in the spring that's my top favorite but this is still a really really good one and I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to keep playing with it. This is a beautiful, beautiful palette. They never let me down on formula with these. So overall, I'm very impressed with this one. I can't wait to keep playing with it. And I will, of course, let you know at the end of the month my final thoughts and my month end speed reviews. And I will, of course, let you know in my community tab when the Viseart Black Friday sale is starting and Hopefully it's a really good one, it usually is, but I will let you know on my community tab as soon as that starts, whether you want to pick up this new one or you want to pick up some other palettes from them. I always recommend their formulas. I just think they're so fantastic. They're one of my favorite, favorite brands, especially for eyeshadows, so I can't recommend them enough, so I will let you know when the sale starts. I do also want to say for those of you who watch my channel regularly, first of all, thank you. I love you so, so much, and I am so grateful. I'm grateful for everyone who watches my channel. I did want to let you know that next week I will actually have three sponsored videos. That was not intentional. It was simply poor time management on my part between YouTube and my two jobs outside YouTube, so I do have three sponsored videos going up next week. Again, that's not intentional, but I did want to let you know. So I do apologize for that. This is the busiest time of year, especially for creators. And this is the first year that I'm actually getting to experience that, which is again, thanks to you. But I did just want to give you a heads up on that because that is very out of character for my channel and it was a complete accident. But that is it for me today. Let me know down below if you're planning to pick this one up. Did you already? What are your thoughts? Are you loving it? Are you planning to shop their Black Friday sale? Let me know all of your thoughts down below. I love hearing from you so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.